the net and its netrunners are a core component to the cyberpunk universe. So much so that some of our most important story developments in 2077 are the result of its long history. While the landscape of the net has vastly changed over time, there is an area that happens to be feared by any sane netrunner. An area that reaches past the ominous black wall constructed by Netwatch after the data crash. The Old Net. Home to an untraceable number of extremely dangerous viruses and AI, violent and non-violent alike. We encounter several of these during our time in Night City, such as Alt Cunningham, a soul-killed pseudo-intellect, Delamain, the taxi cab driver that we discover was purchased from beyond the black wall during the Don't Lose Your Mind quest, and more recently, the Cerberus AI found within the depths of the Sinosure facility. An AI that only provides the slightest hint of the horrors found beyond the black wall. Today, we will be briefly covering the origins of the net, how it functions, and the data crash caused by Raish Bartmoss. More importantly though, we will be discussing the corruption of the old net, sectioning of the new net, and just why the old net can't be completely shut down to rid humanity of the problematic AI beyond the black wall. Let's begin. The net is the name given to the vast telecommunications network of the cyberpunk universe. This version of the net differs from our own in that every networked machine new and old alike, provides a virtual and physical framework that communicates with everything all at once, similar to how our technology interacts in the real world, just in a way that's much more interactive for users. This however, couldn't just be done with the human brain, and will require an additional piece of technology, Cyberdex. A piece of tech embedded in 2005 that would run an interface program to interpret the net for the netrunner, and allow for the traversal and understanding of this plane of existence. There was a catch to this new net. While the unified OS was being developed, the legendary netrunner, Raish Bartmoss, used his personal connections to the developers to sneak his own bit of code in without raising any alarms. A relatively easy task either way, since Bartmoss was already a net mastermind at this point. He had programmed several back doors into the protocol that would allow him to make changes that would affect any computer that logged into the new net, which would essentially act as a cheat code to mass target any OS from then on. One of these mini back doors he created had a dead man switch attached to it, meaning in the event of his death, this back door would be automatically activated. A final act of revenge against all the corporations he despised and viewed as the ultimate oppressors of humanity. Eventually, this time would roll around in the year of 2022, in the middle of the fourth corporate war. Artmos had been convinced by his close friend Alt Cunningham, the creator of Soul Killer, to help her and Militech locate where Arasaka had been hiding the program. This proved to be a relatively easy task for Bartmoss, and he located Soul Killer 2.5 in less than a month. Arasaka finally had enough of Bartmoss. So in response, they set up a web of netrunners and programs specifically meant to locate him. A task made much easier by his rampant bouts of net crime. During the course of one run, his line got traced, and suddenly both Militech and Arasaka knew where he was. Despite Militech's efforts, Arasaka succeeded in their assassination of Bartmoss. It can be argued that what was released as a result damaged them far beyond their imagination. Bartmoss's kill switch had been activated, and with it, the Rabbids virus was unleashed upon the net. Their purpose was to breach all corporate data fortresses and share their data online for all to see. The roving autonomous Bartmoss interface drones proved to be much more dangerous than originally intended. Having greatly exceeded their original program's parameters, they began to wreak havoc across the net, infecting 78.2% of the net and triggering military-grade artificial intelligences to mutate and go rogue, becoming extremely dangerous entities as a result. 
By the end of the war, the net had been reduced to a terrifying wilderness of corrupted data, traps, and rogue AI lurking in wait to destroy anyone desperate enough to venture into cyberspace. It was akin to a hellscape and a breeding ground of demons. One wrong step or look in the wrong direction and a netrunner would be mauled to death, torn limb by limb and shredded beyond recognition. Keep in mind that the net could provide you with all your real senses, even amplifying them. That should give you a new perspective to the fearful experience when encountering these programs from the old net. Netwatch launched a campaign to fight against the corruption, but found themselves incapable of negating the data crash, and were overwhelmed by the multiplying hordes of killer rabbits. With a hopeless outlook, Netwatch was forced to give up. On March 5th, 2023, Netwatch and the IG Overwatch Council activated IGTA Dissolution Prime, propagating a code wave that crashed the IG protocols that allowed Cyberdex and Net-capable computers to reach cyberspace. The Net as they knew it was dead, at least for the time being. After 22 years, Netwatch received the aid of all Cunningham and Transcendent AIs in writing software that could tackle the black ice and rabbits that had infested the old net. This project would be unofficial, with completely fabricated files, under the ominous title of the Black Wall. Using the Black Wall, Netwatch had managed to allocate a portion of the net to be used by humanity, while somewhat unreliably keeping rogue AI in the corrupted old net. Because of the increasing threat level of these AIs sheltering in the old net, there's likely a question that's crossed your mind. Why not just shut down the old net, and along with it, all the dangerous AI that have evolved beyond what anything humanity could program? Surely it couldn't be that difficult, seeing as AI or software that require hardware to run on. Just get rid of whatever systems are running the old net and AI. Well, Chum, if only it were that simple. I certainly wish it was. There's a multitude of reasons as to why the net can't just be shut down. So to make sure you have a complete understanding of the old net and why it exists, I will of course be covering every single reason as to why the rogue AI remain in existence beyond the black wall. First of which being that this hardware is simply unreachable. The major contributor to this issue happens to be the infamous Fourth Corporate War, ironically the time period this data crash took place. Essentially the stars had aligned to make sure the data crash did as much harm as possible. Arasaka and Militech were causing destruction worldwide, and this didn't just pertain to their own property. Their allies, supply chains, and transportation infrastructure were some of the most involved collateral damage to their rivalry. So a lot of these facilities, towns, and even automated factories were heavily damaged and abandoned, but still maintained power. Meaning that to access these places, they not only need to be rediscovered, but have enough equipment or manpower to get past all the destruction left behind and even possible automated defenses. These also included locations orbiting the Earth that were under full automation and connection to the net. So take all these abandoned Earth and orbital facilities still connected to the net, then add the data crash to the equation. Most of the information stored in the net was corrupted, including connections to orbital facilities as well as information on where to find all these different networks. It would make it extremely difficult to track down and disconnect every piece of the old net. You might ask, why not just ping the locations using the net? This is a great question with a relatively simple answer. Netwatch can already have difficulty pinging the locations of high skilled netrunners. So AI evolved way beyond humanity with access to all the same programs as humans, if not more would be even more difficult to find. They would easily be able to prevent Netwatch from just pinging a location. Now while this won't apply nearly as much in the time of 2077, 
there was another important factor to consider. Not only was transportation infrastructure heavily targeted during the Fourth Corporate War, but Chu Tu had become an increasingly rare and expensive commodity during the time of Red. So much so that setting out search parties was an impossibly expensive task for a corporation like Netwatch. So the necessity to actually physically find these servers became even more difficult. There just wasn't enough time or resources in the world to shut down all the old hardware. It certainly doesn't help that during the Fourth Corporate War, the city of Hong Kong fell victim to a bioplague and was sectioned off from the rest of the world. Alt Cunningham then moved into the ruins of Hong Kong and established the Ghost Town, a safe haven for AI that would run on all of the old servers, with the majority of repair work being done by automated drones. Since it's a location victim to a bioplague and no longer having humans, it is a perfect location for the AI, as well as the fact that entering this area would be extremely dangerous. Okay, so you can't physically walk in and disconnect the ghost town. So why not just nuke or EMP these locations? This is an obviously extreme response, but the threat of rogue AIs is increasing. So why not? Well, it's just not a surefire way to destroy the entire net infrastructure. In all likelihood, the corporations previously residing in these cities would have built nuclear-resistant underground facilities to assure the safety of their networks, the same way Arasaka or Militech like to do in Night City. Beyond this, the new and old net are one and the same. They are permanently connected and therefore, suddenly shutting down or destroying a huge portion of the intricately crafted net divided by only the black wall would have unknown consequences, ones that could easily just spell the end of the net itself, and even humanity if rogue AI were to suddenly spill over. Something that the AI are already planning either way. To take down any form of their hardware would be essentially declaring war on the other side. A big reason as to why Netwatch has only ever truly tried to remove access to the old net rather than destroy it. That and the fact that there's invaluable data connected to the old net as well. Information that corporations like Netwatch, Arasaka, and Militech are still attempting to dive and retrieve even in the year of 2077. In Edge Runners, we directly see this with Arasaka's child net running program that would task the team to dive past the black wall in search of any data they could scour. We also see Militech's version of this with Project Sinosure and Phantom Liberty, and the No Coincidences novel in which they attempt to produce an AI with human emotion in order to act as a mediator between the new and old net. We also happen to learn the real situation going on in the old net between AIs. Despite getting hold of Hong Kong and various infrastructures around Earth and outer space, the Arasaka executive Katsuo spills the truth in no coincidences, stating, In reality, these AIs have at their disposal only the limited portion of cyberspace that we ceded to them nearly 40 years ago. No new space has been created, neither is there a back door, no physical connection that leads directly beyond the all-pervasive barrier that is the black wall. If evolution has taken place, it has been determined by limited space and resources. You are afraid of war, but it has already begun among the AIs themselves. It is a war over scarcity." End quote. The situation humanity and Netwatch have at their hands is extremely fragile. The best option really is to bind as much time as possible to prepare for the collapse of the Black Wall and Net. It would be near impossible to entirely shut down the net in the year of 2077. The most they could do is what they previously did in 2023, propagate a code wave to crash the IG protocols that allow Cyberdex and net-capable computers to reach cyberspace, an option unlikely to pass as a result of corporate control. Even with this, 
Rogue AI could still do widespread damage and it would only really prevent the average person from actually accessing cyberspace. Any cybernetics, infrastructure, and much, much more would still be at risk of the rogue AI. So what is the conclusion of all this information? Ultimately, prepare yourself for an AI invasion, Choom. It's headed our way in Cyberpunk Orion, and it's unlikely to be stopped. Familiarize yourself with a lifestyle of no smart weapons or cybernetics, as technology will only end up betraying you. Adopt the old-fashioned views of the legendary solo, Morgan Blackhand, and buy a Liberty Pistol. It even looks like V is already well on their way to being prepared for the AI invasion through the new ending. I'll be making a video soon speaking on just what will happen to him after Phantom Liberty. And that, Chooms, is everything I have to say on the old net and why it can't be shut down. Let me know all your thoughts down below, and if this video helped further your understanding of the old net and cyberpunk universe. I have several other lore dives and theories lined up for Phantom Liberty, so make sure to subscribe and keep up to date. As always, thanks to the channel members up on screen. I appreciate all the support and I'm grateful for the opportunity to make content for you all. I just hit 10,000 subs and I am honestly just shocked at how far this channel has come. Seriously, thank you all so much. I initially planned to release a massive cyberpunk iceberg the day I hit 10,000, but it snuck up on me, way faster than I ever expected. I'll be working on it in the background and will have it out once I believe it is worthy. So make sure to have a great week, and I will see you later, Chooms.